Hi, I'm Michelle. For many centuries, Ashikaga City, Tochigi Prefecture has had a thriving textile industry. In this city, there's a Takumi or innovator who is making an innovative knit fabric using a new technology. Let's go and find out. Ashikaga City, Tochigi Prefecture is in the northern Kanto region. Hello, I'm Michelle. Hello, I'm Hiroki Sato. Today's Takumi or innovator is Hiroki Sato. He developed a very special fabric. Sato's company uses this fabric to develop various products. But by the looks of it, it seems pretty ordinary. I think you would understand it better if you tried it for yourself. Do you mind putting your arm in? Wow, it's really cool inside. That's right. How is this possible? It's made with a special kind of thread. Let me show it to you. We were shown the special thread. This is it. It looks like ordinary thread. It does. But this one thread is actually made up of 110 threads. <laughs> it's really fluffy. What appeared to be a single thread was actually made up of multiple strands. Looking through an electron microscope, you can see that it's an assembly of thin threads. Why was it necessary to make it into a thread like this? We asked Takaaki Nishimura, an associate developer of the thread. Assembling many threads together increases the contact surface. It's made to quickly absorb heat and release it. Development took five years. They experimented with various number combinations and thickness options before arriving at the optimal 110. We tried different numbers, but 110 threads was the softest and immediately felt cool to the touch. Furthermore, entwining silica dioxide with a thread increased its heat conductivity. This is how they completed a thread that feels cold when touched. However, they hit a snag when they tried to make knit fabrics. The twine would come loose and fluff up, resulting in a less than satisfactory material. Then the Takumi came up with an idea. This is one of the solutions that we came up with. Please put your hand here. Something just came out. Yes. What is it? This is a special oil blend. By spraying the special oil onto the thread before the knitting process, the Takumi succeeded in preventing the thread from fluffing up. With this problem solved, the Takumi hoped to begin making products. But a new problem arose in the finishing stage. The hot air used to smooth out the wrinkles after the dyeing process caused the threads to melt. This made it unfit as a product. The temperature of the hot air differed slightly depending on the season and weather. This caused the polyethylene fabric, which was easily affected by these changes, to melt. It took over a year to calculate the ideal wind temperature. This is how the fabric was completed. Here's the finished fabric. Let's see what it's like. Mm -hmm. It's very soft, very cool. From here, the fabric is transported to a factory in Yamagata Prefecture for production. Takumi is hoping to market it overseas, particularly in hot climate regions. 
I'm hoping that people in hot regions will use bed linens and towels made with our fabric and that it will contribute to global warming prevention. This is an arm cover made with the fabric that the community developed. Please feel it. Thank you. Can we try it on? Yes, please do. Okay. Oh, you're right. In inside, it feels very nice and cool. You're right. You know, in Japan, it gets very hot and humid in summer, but this arm cover would not only protect you from the sun, but it would also keep you cool. Hopefully, products like these will reduce the use of air conditioners. It has a smooth texture as well. The Takumi initially planned to have an overseas factory manufactured fabric, but it didn't go so well. The Takumi said that the technology only works because Japanese are very detail-oriented regarding temperature control and more. Thank you very much, Michelle. So, Dr. Oka, today we untangled some Marimo mysteries. How would you round up this topic? I got that. To round it up, the Marimo in Lake Akan formed into spheres because all the conditions were just right but they are very sensitive to changes in their environment. Marimo are a nationally protected species and the country is putting special effort into their conservation. Not only are they designated as special natural monuments, but they've existed in Japan for many years and are a unique and priceless species. I hope we can protect them for future generations. Thank you, Dr. Oka. And thank you all for joining us. See you next time on Science View.